That's a sharpness test right there. This is a fuel filter. This is... This is real life. Real life. Look how many thick... How many... Look how many pieces that is. Real life. That is tougher than any cardboard, let me tell you. That fuel filter was a pretty wicked test because that was some tough, tough, really resilient paper filled with gasoline and it was very rough kind of texture. So now let's see, plastic, fuel filter. Did it hurt it? I would think so. Newspaper. Hmm. Yep. Right there. It's completely rolled over. All right. Don't know what edge is on here, but it's going to get. The 20 degree spider co. Oh yeah, right there you can hear it. It's a wonderful thing about this spider co sharp maker. Triangle sharp maker. You can really hear what these ceramic rods are doing. This thing came ungodly sharp from the factory, but I just put it through a really bad test for being an a AUS-8 steel. I always like how the guys on YouTube, use this really thick paper. Oh, nice and thick. Looks pretty good. Right there. I can see a glimmer right there. All the way back to at least from here to here. I can see a glimmer. I guess that's the magic of AUS-8 AUS steel. That's the magic. Rip it big time. Easily bring it right back. Next, we'll do a little tabletop. And I will discuss my theories of knives. Alrighty, folks, you saw some hard work. You saw some knife work, but now's the comparison. That's what all the knife geeks do. So let's compare. This is an Essie, as I said, it's an Essie Avispa. And I guess that whole Essie thing, I don't know what the deal is. You know, this is very, if you're not like a knife geek, I guess this is kind of, you know, confusing. This is an S-E knife. E-S-E-E. -E. I have no earthly idea what that stands for. On the other hand, it's got this big insignia right here that says Randall's Adventure Training. I don't know what that is, but I guess I'd have to look that up. Then you have 
BRK1301 on this knife. And you got BRK over here. That's supposed to be Blue Ridge Knives. So, let's try to figure this out. Okay, it's an Essene Avispa. See, Avispa, as everybody says, that stands for wasp in Spaniardism. This knife here was sent to me by the most loyal friend and viewer of Captain Dave's Sport Fishing YouTube channel. And his name is Orowak. You can see him in the comments below, I'm sure. He wanted me to do a little something about this knife because he's got a couple of them, I, I suppose. Yeah, he showed them to me. And he wanted me to do sort of a review on this. So, let's say this is mighty confusing. I've watched all the other videos, all the other knife geeks talk about this knife. Okay, it's an SE knife. It's distributed by Blue Ridge Knives. It is approved, or I don't know, Adventure, Advan uh, Randall's Adventure Training. I have no earthly idea who that is either. Woo, man, I'll be confused. I mean, I'm just Joe Public here. Joe Public. So uh, let's go over this. As you've seen, I pretty much folded the edge over. So I ran it on the sharp maker and I made it sharp again. And it is a, I guess they would call this a liner lock. A little tough to get in there with the thumb. Okay, a little tough. And first thing I told Orowak is I'm so used to a certain knife that we'll talk about here in just a minute that locks up like no tomorrow that I don't like knives that when you shake them, they can popping out. There might be a slight detent here, right there. There is a slight little, right there, right there. Oh, there it goes, it sucks it in. It's hardly noticeable, but at least, no matter what you do, that is not popping open. And one thing that I really like, and you may like also, because remember, you're not watching a Knife Geek channel here, folks, okay? I'm just a guy. I'm just a user. Hey, man. <laughs> Don't take me to prison, man. I'm just a, I'm just a user. I'm not the seller. <laughs> Isn't that what you'd hear on Cops or something? But, okay, you got a FRN, fiberglass reinforced, kind of like your boat. You got your boat on this side, and then you got my boat on this side, metal. Okay, your boat, my boat. So that's kind of nice. And then, of course, you've got these standoffs, which I've never in my entire life owned a knife that has these, what they call standoffs here. You got one, two, three, four, five of them. So that makes where you're not crushing this thing. You are not, I've seen it already where there's ones like this and you can crush this with your fingers. So one thing, as I was saying, it is tip down when you get it. I like that for safety. Safety means tip down, not tip up. On a knife like this. It's got, I guess, this little slot just for, uh, cleaning it out. This thing's growing on me. Very smooth, very short to get in there with the old thumb to close it. But it's very smooth, good lockup, good. I like how this literally goes in to at least half the blade and I can make it go the whole blade, to tell you the truth. 
I can make it go the whole blade by pushing it over. That would be nice if it did the whole blade. Okay. So, but let's say if it'll go whole blade when you snap her open. Nah, maybe half to three quarter of the blade, this comes over. There you go. Stainless on this side, nice pocket clip, nice large place to put a, a lanyard if you're that kind of guy. And you can see you can put the pocket clip from here to here to here to here, depending on what side you want. But this is a very nice knife. Now let's get into a comparison. Here's all the rage now with cold steel. This is the cold steel air light. This is what I'm used to, folks. This is what I'm used to. The triad lock. Look at that. I mean, the triad lock sucks that blade in. Very light. This is its competitor. Just G10. And you can kind of... You can't squeeze that too hard. Make it move. You can see it move just a little. Triad lock. Right? That's the big claim to fame. It's a bit different of a blade. Bit different of a blade. Look at the blade stock. Right next to each other. The cold steel is definitely, definitely thicker. The blades are different. The thumb stud on this one is the same. It sticks out on the cold steels. It always kind of goes to the right hand. So, there you go. And on this one, it's kind of doing the same thing. It's a little bit bigger over here. Sorry, lefties. Southpaws. But, this thing's growing on me because this is what I'm used to. As far as a small pocket knife. Now, to tell you the truth, what have I usually been carrying? Cold Steel Tiger Claw. I love this thing. All right, folks. Sorry I'm doing this in the garage, but I got a nice beam to hang the rope from. You can see I got it taped together. Eat your heart out, Lynn Thompson. No problem. I cheated. I had about a 15 pound weight hanging on the end of that rope, keeping it tighter than Dick's hat band. But, it still did it. So, now, all I got is a 8 ounce bank sinker. Just keeping it straight. That's all I'm doing. And let's see. I would say it's going to go through at least one of these ropes, at least one. Who wants to who wants to make a bet? Target is right about here, I believe. Eat your heart out, Lynn Thompson. Zen. Zen. Keeping it tighter would be, you know, really uh, holding it super taut. 
That's an eight ounce bank sinker. Not bad, huh? With that test right there, I'd say that's a good boat knife. So, what's the verdict? Still pretty damn sharp too, boy, let me tell you. After all that, let's see what she does. Well, who gives a shit about cutting paper, really? Because that's not what we do in the real world. Since, uh, I got lots of this stuff around. Bamboo. Hardened. Seriously hardened bamboo. Been sitting out, outside, in Florida. So let's just see how good she does here. Not bad. Not bad at all. It's some serious, serious hard stuff. Is it going to bend this knife right over? Let's see how deep we can go. I keep hearing that. Oh, I think it's just a knife, just a belt clip. I keep hearing a noise. You know, if you're at Ran if you're at Randall's Adventure Training, which I don't know who that is. Okay, she's opening it up. She's doing it. For thirty dollars, folks. Thirty dollars. You know, they always say it's the heat treatment and all this stuff. Well, I don't know anything about all that. The heat treatment that I worry about is the heat treat on my mustad hooks. <laughs> all right. So, what else should we try now? Maybe, uh, chopping these feather sticks off how about wrenching on it there we go wrenching on some bamboo Not bad. I am double gloved. Now, the lockup test. It's still there. Still there. All right, the other way around. It's still there. We're going to do any more with this? I don't think so.
thirty dollars, folks. All right. Well, let's give it one more abuse test here, and then we're gonna go test it on paper. All right. To end this test of the Essie. A Vispa. Okay, this is the cover. Sort of the back cover of the magazine. You saw what I just did. The first time I had to resharpen it. Now, that was going straight down through some really tough stuff. I haven't done anything. We're back in the knife lab. <laughs> the knife lab, yeah. Now, let's see. This is kind of thick paper. Let's see what she does. Well, did she just bite the bullet? Did she just bite the bullet? Well, that's not bad for what it just went through. Now let's do the super paper test. Newsprint. She cuts. She cuts! I don't know, what is this, a super knife? Start, we gotta start down here where I didn't put any tension or I didn't put any abuse. So, make up your mind, folks. $30. I'll see you on the next one. Give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you're uh, not a knife geek and you like a non knife geek's uh, opinion or review. This is a magazine cover right here. That little bit thicker. You give it, give it a little bit thicker and she'll cut all day long. Subscribe, because we do it all on the Captain Dave Sport Fishing Channel. We fish, we talk knives, we talk rods, we talk reels. We talk everything here. Maintenance, outboard maintenance, we do a little bit of everything. I want to go fishing, because it takes my stress away. I want to go fishing, try and cast my blues away.